Good morning and thank you for attending the KCOM Alumni Recognition Ceremony. My name is Bob Bainan, Associate Vice President of University Advancement. Today we are celebrating our 50 and 25 year KCOM reunion classes, the classes of 1968 and 1993, as well as those who have graduated more than 50 years ago and a few award recipients this morning as well. First and foremost, I would like to welcome, uh, we have our uh, gold medallion uh, recipients over here, our uh, alumni reunion classes, our, uh, case, our CME attendees, ATSU students, faculty staff, international guests, and our ATSU Board of Trustees. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce a 1984 graduate of ATSU KCOM and president of AT Still University, Dr. Craig Phelps. Thank you. Bob, uh, thank you. And, uh, Thank you all for being here today. We always enjoy having our alumni come back and sharing with our students, sharing with our faculty and staff, kind of remembering those difficult times as well as those fun times as, uh, as you went through your, your education and your training through uh, KCOM. So welcome and thank you very much for being here. Uh, our students enjoy interacting. We were talking a few minutes ago, but yesterday the students that got to interact with some of those here for the, their CME kind of get inspired of what's going to happen next. Wow, there is a there is a uh, end to this journey as far as the four years of medical school. So thank you for being here, uh, faculty and staff. Thank you. Uh, you know they may not remember who the president is 20 years from now, but they'll remember who their faculty and staff were that reached out to the students and and who took care of them and uh, who made that class special or made that experience special or dealt with something that they were dealing with, maybe with a family or a friend or a, or a personal situation. So our faculty and staff is just amazing. So thank you for being here. We also have our Board of Trustees. Uh, and our Board of Trustees, we really have a national board. It's made up of individuals from all over the country who you heard me say every 90 days get the privilege of leaving their house, leaving their job, leaving their family and coming to Kirksville, Missouri, or Mesa, Arizona, or wherever they're called, uh, and a number of other things that they are called to come and do regarding accreditation, et cetera. So I'd like our board members that are here to please stand and want to give you guys a round of applause. So thank you for all you do. They're the guardians of the university. Uh, and since we're the founding school of osteopathic medicine, they're really the guardians of the osteopathic profession along with our graduates and our faculty and staff. So you're going to hear from some of our leadership, so I will not introduce all of them. I'll introduce our Board of Trustee Chair, Dr. Gary Wiltz, if you want to come up. Uh, Dr. Wiltz is a true champion of A.T. Still University. Uh, he practices as well as as administrator in healthcare. He practices in Franklin, uh, Louisiana, and uh, we have some of our students embedded in his community health center. And one that I think is became an employee, is that correct? Yes, so we had one young man who had a vision of returning to Scottsdale to be a specialist and was gonna go back there and, and change the world and do well. And his time at the community health center under Dr. Wiltz's mentorship, uh, he changed his mind and he now practices about as far away from Scottsdale as you can get but probably in just as, as rich environment as Scottsdale, Arizona is. And Dr. Wills, thank you for your dedication to A.T. Still University serving on our board and being the board chair. That's a lot of work, and it's often a two-year thankless job. Dr. Drew did it for three years. We were able to talk him into it somehow during, uh, I think, a night at the Dukem. Uh, no, uh, not, not really. <laughs> not really. Uh, uh, but uh, Dr. Wills, thank you for all that you do. Thank you so much, Craig. And as I mentioned earlier, we divide our time uh, on the Board of Trustees with B.C. and A.C., before Craig and after Craig and um, you know, but we're here today on behalf of the Board of Trustees to actually congratulate and thank you. Uh, it's the uh, legacy of the alumni that sustains this university. You know, AT still, as we all know, was the pioneer, but it's sometimes easier to start something than sustain something. And it's because of graduates like you and the careers and the work that you have done as ambassadors of AT still that it enjoys the reputation of the preeminent uh, university in the osteopathic world. So on behalf of the, uh, behalf of the Board of Trustees, we want to acknowledge and thank you for uh, your service and your commitment to, to this university and being the ambassadors that you've been for the, the careers that you've had and hopefully you will continue to have. Uh, I know I get teased all the time. They said, are you going to be, are you retired yet? And I say, no, I'm just tired. The, the, re, <laughs> the report will come later. But, Again, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, thank you for all you do. You. 
Thank you, Dr. Phelps and Dr. Wiltz. Uh, we will now hear from our three deans on our Missouri campus. Uh, first is Dr. Margaret Wilson, a Kirksville native and a 1982 graduate of ATSU KCOM, and now the dean of the college. Dr. Wilson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and, and welcome to everyone today. You know, it's just really remarkable to look out and, and see all the people that, you know, make what we do each day here on campus possible. And we're just so grateful. You know, we're all here today because one man had a vision, a vision of something different for the face of medicine. And he really changed the trajectory of healthcare in this country. And, and that's reflected it today in, in, in the tremendous growth of our profession. When you look around the room, we see alumni, we see students, we see faculty, we see staff, we see our board members, we see international uh, osteopaths uh, as part of those today. And, and we're all connected by this common thread uh, of this real, uh, you, you know, philosophy and, and real dedication to this profession. And it, you know, we, we are a family, and we always welcome you back to have you here on campus, particularly this time of year, to really honor that heritage and to remember, you know, how we are connected and all still a part of that and all still contributing to that. We are so grateful. You know, I'm kind of an osteopathy nerd. Uh, <laughs> And each year I try to bring a, a, a A.T. Still quote uh, to Founders Day. And I thought this one was kind of timely because we live in challenging times, do we not? Uh, challenging times certainly for healthcare, very challenging times for the osteopathic profession. Uh, and it's really what brings us together that, that keeps us moving forward. So I, I, this struck me uh, uh, what A.T. Still you know, left for us for, for words for today to think about. Let us not be governed today by what we did yesterday, nor tomorrow by what we do today. For day by day, we must show progress. So just remember, remember our, our founder, you know, he tells us to, to work each day just to make ourselves and our profession, our school, our programs better. And thank you again for being here. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Don Altman is the Dean of the College of Graduate Health Studies. Dr. Altman graduated from the University of Texas Dental Branch in 1983. He completed his Master of Public Health degree at the University of Texas School of Public Health in 1989 and became board certified in dental public health in 1999. Dr. Altman has been with ATSU since 2006 and has served as the Dean of CGHS since 2014. Dr. Altman. I think that introduction is longer than what I have to say to you. Uh, first, to our alumni, welcome. Um, Dr. Wilson is an osteopathic nerd. I guess I'm an online nerd. The College of Graduate Health Studies um, is the online school here at the university and was probably not around when any of our alumni that are here were a, a student. But we have been around for 20 years. And we have three doctoral programs and three master's programs, 100% online for healthcare professionals. Clearly, they're not clinical. Um, there are, in the past 20 years, there have been over 2,100 alumni from our school. Um, that have received degrees and over 600 uh, students have just gotten a certificate from us, which is generally four or five classes. We currently have over 100, uh, 1,220 students, which is almost a third of the university, because I think the university has about 3,700 students. So we're almost a, a third of the university. We are uh, technically um, located here in Kirksville. Um, how many of you remember the Oklahoma building? We're in the Oklahoma building. It's still here. Um, we call it the cottage. It is actually the Oklahoma building. That's not funny. It's the cottage. <laughs> it's, 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 it's technically, technically the Oklahoma building, but we've built around it, so it looks like a little house. So when you go tonight to celebration over to the TCC, on the right is our cottage. So just wave, and somebody will wave back at you. But, uh, that's where we're, so we're across osteopathy um, here on campus. 
Um, just so that you know, most, we have students from all 50 states and six countries. Um, most of our students come from Arizona, Texas, Florida, Missouri, and California. Um, about 43% of our students are, are doctoral students. About 40% are master students and the remaining percent, whatever that is, 17% are students that are getting a certificate from us. So just so you know, it's never too late to come back to ATSU. So if you decide you don't want to be a clinician anymore and you want to have fun online, um, College of Graduate Studies would welcome you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Altman. Poonam Jain is Professor and Vice Dean for Clinical Education, Operations, and Community Partnerships for the Missouri School of Dentistry and Oral Health's St. Louis Dental Center. Dr. Jain obtained her Bachelor of Dental Surgery degree from the University of Delhi, her Certificate and Master's degree in Operative Dentistry from the University of Iowa, and her Master's of Public Health from St. Louis University. Dr. Jane is an accomplished academician, researcher, and clinician, and provides dental students with lectures covering operative dentistry, carries risk assessment and management, dental materials, community, and preventive dentistry, and geriatric dentistry. Dr. Jane. Thank you. Bob, I'm humbled by that. Um, thank you very much. It, it, it. I'm really not all that, but uh, I am here on behalf of Dr. Dwight McLeod, the Dean for the Missouri School of Dentistry and Oral Health, who could not be here today. Um, I serve as the Vice Dean for Clinical Education and Operations. I'm stationed primarily in St. Louis. But our school, the Missouri School of Dentistry and Oral Health, is the newest and the youngest school for the A.T. Still University. So I'm sure our founder, Dr. A.T. Still, would be very proud if he were to visit our school here in Kirksville, as well as our clinic, our dental education center in St. Louis. I think he would be very proud. Although talking of buildings, we have very fast overgrown uh, our own building in St. Louis. So we have, we have really, really um, grown at a tremendous pace. Uh, so we started in 2013. We graduated our first class of 42 in 2017 with a 100% pass rate on the Regional Licensing Board exam. So we're very proud. We, we graduated our second class of 41 students in 2018 with a 100% pass rate on the Regional Licensure Board exams. So, um, and, and I'm hoping that, um, of course, this is not just beginner's luck, but the pressure has built up, so. <laughs> Uh, so we hope to continue this, this path of success. Uh, of course, this comes with challenges. We are a unique model, to the best of our knowledge, the only dental school in the country with this model. So we run our clinics in partnership with a federally qualified health center, Affinia Healthcare. So um, it is a unique and innovative partnership, which has huge benefits, comes with huge challenges as well. At, at the daily operational level. So, um, you know, we have successfully maneuvered that and uh, continue to build upon those successes. So, um, I won't take too much more time, but uh, my predecessors, Drs. Wilson, Dr. Altman, are uh, nerds of osteopathy and, uh, and of uh, online education. Um, I'm a history nerd, so, I, you know, all the alumni that are here, we're, we're grateful to have you back. Somebody just asked, soon your school will have its 50th reunion. Of course, I won't be around for that, but we will have the 50th reunion. But the word alumnus, the words alumnus and alumna come from the verb aler, which means to nourish. So the university has nourished all of us with knowledge and with skills. The Romans used the word alumnus or the words alumnus and alumna for children that were placed in foster care, those foster children could become heirs to their property or could be their slaves. Of course, the university is our true parent, not just the foster parent, and um, will not use us as slaves, but as heirs. So we are heirs to the heritage of A.T. Still. So welcome to this Founders Day, 
and thank you for the opportunity to speak and tell you a little bit about the Missouri School of Dentistry and Oral Health. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jane. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you Amanda Oliver, a second year ATSU KCOM student and Student Government Association Chair. Amanda. So welcome everybody, uh, good morning. On behalf of the Student Government Association, I just wanna give you a warm welcome um, back to Kirksville. Some of us like to call it K Vegas around here, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that K KCOM has changed a lot throughout the years, but I hope as you walk through these hallways, you can kind of remember those fond memories that we've all created here. Uh, what hasn't changed here at KCOM is our SGA's commitment to our fellow students. So as a collective group, we make an effort to host engaging fun and fun activities that allow us to relax and de-stress from the hustle of medical school. We have um, lunch hour picnics, reindeer romp 5Ks, and everyone's favorite winter formal and wine night. In the recent years with the addition of MOSDO, it is even more vital that SGA works as a collective organization to bring together the students um, from each professional program. With SGA, there's representation from MOSDO, KCOM, our biomed program, and we can't forget our online students as well. This year, we have listened to the students and expanded study space on campus. We've also hosted a health insurance forum um, to, give, to discuss options available to those that are starting out in the world of independent um, health insurance. We have numerous committees throughout SGA, such as intramural, environment, diversity, bylaws, and more, making sure that more students are involved and they get to say, have a say in the changes in our policies. Um, for example, the political, com the political committee um, held an event to help students obtain and submit absentee ballots for the 2018 midterm elections. Lastly, I would like to extend uh, a huge thank you to KOOA for the contributions that allow um, our various clubs to flourish and reach more students to educate them um, on really important modern medicine topics that we have. So thank you to the alumni for being here and sharing your wisdom with us. Um, all of the students really appreciate it. And I hope to see you guys today, 3.30 Powder Puff football game. Go second years. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Amanda. Dr. David Goldman is a 1991 graduate of KCOM and the past president of the Kirksville Osteopathic Alumni Association. He will now join me here to recognize the KOAA Honors Excellence awardees and we'll do a microphone handoff here. Bob, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Each year, the Kirksville Osteopathic Alumni Association recognizes alumni, employees, and friends who have made significant contributions to KCOM, ATSU, in the osteopathic profession. We recognized a few individuals, bless you, at AOA OMED recently, but as not everyone was able to travel to San Diego for recognition, we wanted to take the opportunity to share their achievements with the campus community today. Detailed information about the entire 2018 KOAA Award recipient panel is included in the KOAA Honors Excellence booklets you all received on your way in. I will tell you a little about each award recipient and then call them down individually for a photo with Dr. Wilson. Honorary membership. We will begin with honorary KOAA membership. Honorary membership in the Kirksville Osteopathic Alumni Association may be conferred by specific action and approval of the KOAA Board of Directors upon persons who have rendered meritorious service to the osteopathic education. This year's recipients are Bob Beenan, Betty Krause, the Freeman Foundation, 
and Eleanor Steinbaum. Bob and Betty have been recognized previously. Today, however, we are pleased to have the Freeman Foundation and Eleanor Steinbaum with us for Founders Day. The Freeman Foundation is a proud supporter of ATSU in the Kirksville campus. The foundation has been particularly supportive of osteopathic heritage through its gifts to the Museum of Osteopathic Medicine's special exhibits and collections, medicinal garden, and interprofessional education building endowment fund. Founded by Travis and Lucia Freeman in the early 1990s, the Freemans were loyal supporters of beautifying and strengthening the communities in which they lived. Lucia passed in 2005 and Travis in 2010, but the foundation continues to be a tremendous supporter of the medicinal garden, contributing to the variety of plants with medicinal qualities and adding elements of visual art to the garden. Following the Freemans' lead and legacy, the foundation is now run by their daughter, Terry Crandall. Today, family members of the foundation are here to receive the award. We'll ask that they come forward. Dr. Wilson will present the award, and our photographer will take a picture. Eleanor Ellie Steinbaum has remained a lifelong advocate and donor to the university in addition to providing encouragement and steadfast support to family members who have earned their place among ATSU KCOM's distinguished alumni. Chief among these family members are her husband, Dr. Fred Steinbaum, who is with us today, and their daughter, Dr. Suzanne Steinbaum. It is with great appreciation that we recognize Ellie for her valuable contributions to this great university. Ellie was presented her award during an alumni reception that was held at their home this summer. Please join me again in expressing our appreciation to Ellie Steinbaum. The Distinguished Service Award. The KOAA Board of Directors established the Distinguished Service Award in 1991. This award may be granted to alumni and friends who have provided outstanding service and or financial support to AS, ATSU and KCOM or to the KOAA. This year's recipients are Kent Campbell, DO, class of 1983, and Andy Jackson. Dr. Kent Campbell attended Truman State University with the intent of applying to ATSU KCOM. As part of a legacy family, both his father and grandfather being ATSU KCOM graduates, he did not even consider other medical schools. After graduating from ATSU KCOM in 1983, he and his wife moved to St. Louis where he completed a one-year rotating internship at Normandy Osteopathic Hospital, now DePair Hospital. Following completion of his internship, Dr. Campbell joined fellow ATSU KCOM graduate James Nelson Dio, 1965, in practice for several years. And Dr. Campbell eventually purchased the practice. Through his 30 plus years as a family medicine practitioner, 
He held various leadership roles as well. In addition to serving on numerous committees, he was the Associate Medical Director for the United Healthcare of Midwest, served as the Family Medicine Department Chair at Normandy Osteopathic Hospital, supported the development of a 100-plus physician hospital contracting body with the Sisters of St. Mary Healthcare, and was president of the DePaul Medical Group for 13 years. Because ATSU KCOM has prepared many physicians to provide outstanding care for so many people, he had always hoped to one day contribute to the mission of educating highly skilled graduates. Given the opportunity to serve the college, Dr. Campbell returned to Kirksville in January of 2014 in his current role as the, as the Associate Dean for Academic and Clinical Educational Affairs and has been working tirelessly to ensure high quality clinical experiences around the country for our students. Dr. Campbell, please would you come forward to receive your award. Andy Jackson is a lifelong supporter and advocate for ATSU KCOM and ATSU. After being recruited by former ATSU KCOM <coughs> President Fred Tinning for the Volunteer Programs Coordinator position in 1988, she served many years in university advancement, traveling throughout the country, visiting with alumni, and sharing about the college's growth. She also promoted ATSU through her work in student affairs, human resources, the ATSU KCUM Dean's Office, and ATSU Mose Doe. Andy's other passions outside of ATSU include being an advocate for the agriculture industry in rural communities. Her husband, Bob, operated a traditional family farm of livestock and row crops in Adair County for 45 years. In 2008, they converted the farm into an agro-tourist operation, Jackson Country Connection, which annually hosts 5,000 guests during the fall season. Community involvement being extremely important to Andy, she has served on the County and State Farm Bureau Committees, Adair County and Northeast Regional Extension Council, and the Government's Advisory Council on Agriculture. She has also been a 4-H leader and is currently vice chair of the Missouri Livestock Symposium <coughs> Committee. Andy, would you please come forward so we may recognize you. I just wanted to say what a humbling and high honor this is for me. You know, we stand on the shoulders of a lot of individuals who uh, have tenacity and who have had vision and who have had uh, persistence spirits. And as we have noted, A.T. Still himself uh, certainly had all of that. And he was um, very vigilant in reminding us to keep it pure. Keep it pure, boys. Keep it pure. And that's what binds us all together today. And that's, that's uh, my privilege to be able to say that I've been a, one, uh, a part of this wonderful family. Thank you all so much for this great honor. The Living Tribute Award. The Living Tribute Award was established by the KOAA in 1969 to recognize and honor 
KCOM faculty members and administrators for their outstanding accomplishments and or long-term service to the college. This year's Living Tribute Award recipient is Dan Martin. After After earning his Bachelor of Science in Recreation and Social Science from T Truman State University in 1977 and his Master of Arts in Physical Education and Sports Administration in 1978, Dan served as the manager at Kirksville's Courthouse Racquetball and Health Club for five years. Dan was attracted to ATSU through college roommates who were ATSU KCOM students. And he knew if he were going to stay in Kirksville, he wanted to manage the Thompson Campus Center, the college's first recreation and fitness center. Dan has served ATSU for more than 32 years as the director of wellness programs at the Thompson Campus Center. Over those years, annual membership has nearly doubled with thousands of students, employees, and community members being encouraged to make positive and lasting lifestyle choices. Dan's passion for active lifestyles and fitness is truly remarkable, and his list of accomplishments projects his passion. He was the Olympic torchbearer at the 1996 Games. From 1993 to 2003, he was the Show Me State Games Festival Chair. In 1995, he received the Governor's Fitness and Health Leadership Award and in 2013, he received, bless you, the Missouri Bike and Pedestrian Federation Leadership Award. Furthermore, he is a volunteer for the American Heart Association and is on the statewide advocacy committee. As director of the Thompson Campus Center, Dan became a certified wellness program coordinator in 2006 and a certified wellness practitioner in 2010 through the National Wellness Institute. He has been the race director for the Nemo Triathlon, which has directed more than 200 races. Dan, would you please come forward to be recognized for your award? I would like you all again to please congratulate all of the well-deserved award recipients among us. Thank you all again very, very much. Dr. Goldman, thank you for a wonderful job in that presentation. Thank you so much. It is now my privilege to introduce to you our distinguished alumni and guest from the KCOM graduating class of 1968 and 1993, the distinguished members of the ATSU KCOM Gold Medallion Club and alumni from several other classes. Dr. Wilson will be presenting special recognition pins and medallions to each of our reunion class honorees. We'll begin with the class of 1993. The class of 1993 is celebrating their 25-year class reunion. As I call your name, please come forward to receive your 25-year silver anniversary recognition pin from Dr. Wilson and pause for a photograph. The class of 1993. Carrie Bisbee, Walnut Grove, Missouri. Children, Richard, Zoe, and Quentin. Personal hobbies, shooting, photography, camping, and traveling. So happy that you can make it with us here today, Dr. Bisbee.
Susan Giovanni from Wichita, Kansas. Her spouse is Bryson Butts and children, Rachel, Samuel, and Megan. Professional, yes. Professional affiliations, the American Academy of Family Physicians and Medical Society of Sedgwick County. Personal hobbies, reading, and volunteer work. Dr. Susan Giovanni. Our next recipient is Gary Matlock from Farmington, Missouri. Children, uh, Bailey, and professional affiliations, the Veterans Affairs. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> We'll have to catch up with you. What, what are your personal hobbies and interests? I do a job named Bailey. I work for Farmington, Missouri. Uh, I, I work for the government. There we go. <laughs> Please join me in recognizing all of our 25 year graduates. The class of 1968 is celebrating their 50-year class reunion, and as I call your name, please come forward to receive your 50-year anniversary gold medallion from Dr. Wilson and pause for a photograph. Our first recipient is James Agresti from Nutley, New Jersey, spouse Lynn, children James, Victoria, and three grandchildren, professional affiliations, medical director of three nursing facilities, medical director of hospice facility, and is associated with three hospitals. Dr. James Agresti. Our next recipient is Dr. Gary Clark. From Sergeant Bluff, Iowa, spouse Carol, children Jason, Valerie, Jason, and Jill. <laughs> Professional Affiliations, American Osteopathic Association, the American Medical Association, American College of Osteopathic Pediatricians, Unity Healthcare, and personal hobbies are old cars and tractors. Dr. Gary Clark. John DeWitt. From Tulsa, Oklahoma, spouses Linda, children Reagan, McLean, John, and Francis, Professional Affiliations, Oklahoma Osteopathic Association, American Academy of Neurology, and Fellow in the American Academy of Neurology. His personal hobbies are skiing, hunting, hiking, and biking. Dr. John DeWitt. <laughs> Carter Fenton from Chaffee, Missouri, or Chaffee, I guess it is. Uh, wife, Sue Ellen, children, Paige, Heather, and Carter. Dr. Carter Fenton. Our next recipient is Richard Fuller from Canton, Ohio. His spouse is Patricia and children, Scott and Susan. Professional affiliations, American Osteopathic Association, the Ohio Osteopathic Association, the Ohio State Medical Association, and Stark County Medical Society. Personal hobbies, travel, golf, fly fishing, cycling, and billiards. I guess we'll have to watch out at Dukem later on. <laughs> Our next recipient is Terrence Hawkins, here from Kirksville, Missouri. Spouse Janet, children's Allison and Ian. Affiliations, American Osteopathic Association and the British Isles Neuro-Ophthalmology Club. Personal hobbies, antiques, Dr. Terrence Hawkins. Our next recipient is Randall Hess. <coughs> Excuse me. Randall Hess from Pelham, Alabama. <clears throat> Spouse is Jennifer, children, Adam, Jessica, Tiffany, and Sloan. Professional affiliations, fellow of the American College of Cardiology, 
clinical cardiology fellow of the American Heart Association, retired from the Ad Alabama Cardiovascular Group in Birmingham, Alabama in 2013. Personal hobbies, motorcycle touring. Dr. Randall Hess. <laughs> Joseph Hoffman from Paris, Kentucky. Children, Jennifer and Chelsea. Professional affiliations, the American Osteopathic Association and the American College of Osteopathic Emergency Physicians. Personal hobbies, golf, horses, sailing, and travel. Dr. Joseph Hoffman. <laughs> Next recipient is Frederick Steinbaum, Hopatcong, New Jersey. Wife, Eleanor or Ellie, as we saw earlier. Children, Gary and Suzanne, a 1994 KCOM graduate. Professional Affiliations, New Jersey Association of Osteopathic Physicians and Surgeons, American Osteopathic Association, and the American College of Field Liaison Physicians. Personal hobbies, competing in water sports, including sailing and, wait for it, barefoot water skiing. <laughs> Dr. Fred Steinbaum. Please join me in recognizing all of our new gold medallion recipients. We do have a number of alumni who have received their gold medallion recognition in previous years who may be with us today. We'd ask that they please stand so that we could recognize them now. Do we have any other gold medallion recipients in the, in the audience? We do. We also had the pleasure of having alumni and numerous other KCON cl classes join us this week for CME and other programs. We thank you all for coming back to Founders Day as well. These alumni have, have had support systems along their journey, and we know that, and we would be remiss not to recognize these important partners. Would the still partners, family members, and guests celebrating their loved ones' recognition please stand and let us extend a special thank you for your ongoing support. Thank you to all of our alumni. We're honored to have you back on campus. Each of you has left a tremendous legacy for generations of KCOM students and graduates to emulate. We are humbled by the many years of healing and dedication to your patients, your college, and the osteopathic profession. As an example of the impact that you've had on osteopathic medicine, your families, and communities, we would like to show you a video created in honor of Dennis Zinkon, who recently passed away but whose trust has provided a $1 million gift to the ATSU KCOM in honor of his father, Dr. Donald Lee Zinkon, KCOM class of 1965, which will not only make a significant and measurable difference for ATSU KCOM and osteopathic medical education, but whose fine example of generosity serves as an example for all of us. Uh, where do I begin with Dennis? Um, he was the guy that, that everybody loved. If you didn't like Dennis, if you didn't love Dennis, something was wrong with you. Family is important to us on the PGA Tour and particularly the Web.com Tour. Uh, Zinke was a big part of that family. He was, uh, he was a big brother to all of us. Uh, he educated us and taught us something every day. As much as he was a professional at the game of golf, he, uh, his expertise was in the game of life. He was one of those guys that right there in my hand, anytime day or night, I could call and he would be there. Zinke was a guy, every time you came on the truck or around um, the truck, he, he was always there with a smile and encouraging word. He, he always uh, would give you encouragement and help you figure out where, you're, uh, where you need to go or what you need to do or um, he always wanted to help you or have you kind of help in return. Definitely a sense of humor. I mean, if you had a bad day, He'd go on the truck and he'd make you, make you smile, make you laugh, and he was just a just kind of a good friend, you know. I think he'd do anything for anybody out here, and that's kind of why everybody honors him the way they do. Dennis Zinkon, the, uh, the Don's son, Novella's son, who uh, played on the Web.com tour, uh, also played in three U.S. Opens, 
uh, which is pretty stellar. Uh, his estate and trust, uh, half of that um, um, donation went to the St. Jude's Children's Hospital in Memphis and the other half to the Kirksville College. And uh, the donation will be uh, uh, a little bit in excess of a million dollars for each institution. And uh, uh, Dennis uh, surely felt that, that his father's career uh, needed to be uh, uh, highlighted and uh, uh, that's why he made uh, the decision to make the donation in that way. Uh, we trust that the substantial gift, which again is in a little bit in excess of a million dollars, uh, to the Kirksville College will help uh, uh, not only the students but the staff to advance their programs and uh, uh, help that institution along in the future years. That's something that he would do and it's just it's amazing and he you know always looking out for other people and you know it's it's made a lot of us take a look deep down inside i mean we we play a very very selfish game and and um you know it's it's always always about us zinke was a zinke never put himself first that's pretty amazing always zinke At this time, I would like to extend a special thanks to the Founders Day Planning Committee members led by co-chairs Kelly Kirkland and Melissa Parman. If you're here, would you please stand so we can thank you? <laughs> Additionally, our appreciation goes out to my university advancement colleagues, the uh, continuing education program team, Dr. Lloyd Cleaver, Jan Baum, Lynn Daniels, and Debbie Western as well. Thank you so much. So just a few more notes as we wrap up. Reunion participants and their guests, we ask that you please stay seated and we'll be taking a class photo immediately following this meeting. Uh, CME attendees, board of trustees, uh, the alumni luncheon will be held in the Centennial Commons, located just outside the classroom doors to your right. Signs and ushers are available to assist you. Uh, for those who wish to join us later for the virtual campus walking tour and Kirksville bus tour, we'll be meeting back in this room at 105. And for everyone, thank you all for participating in the alumni recognition ceremony. We'll see you throughout the rest of the day and tomorrow during your stay here. Thank you so much. Thank you.